Hello, Facebook Live and YouTube streaming. You are here with Wine Cellars Wine Weekend, and we are continuing our series of virtual tastings. Uh, we'll actually be wrapping it up, uh, our national calendar, on Wednesday with uh, Charlie Master from Tiamo, and we'll taste uh, not only some wines, but some new product we have out on the market, some spritz. Today, we have another special guest from Germany. And um, yeah, Charlie Masters, he's already here. He's excited. He's excited for Wednesday already. Hi, Charlie. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm excited because we get to talk about a relatively underappreciated region called the Naha. Um, it is a region in Germany one of the 13, and this is about a mid-size, around the middle of the pack in terms of size. Um, and it's probably lesser known because it's dwarfed by its next door neighbor, the Rheinhessen, which is six times bigger than the Naha, um, and just sits just to the east. However, the Naha has tremendous history and terrific wines and lots of diversity and actually a few subregions. Um, like other regions, it's situated on a river and depending on where you are on that river, you've got a bunch of different soil types. We're going to actually head towards a spa town called Bad Kreuznach um, and visit with our friend Paul Anheuser from an eponymously named Paul Anheuser ancestor, uh, his, 14, his uh, 12th great grandfather or so, He's 14th generation, so the estate in Bad Kreuznach in the Naha goes back to 1627. So they're relatively new at the game. Um, we're going to taste. Um, we're going to taste some Rieslings here. We're going to uh, taste an older Riesling versus a younger one. We're also going to taste a Blanc de Noir made from Pinot Noir. Well, the region. Uh, I'm not going to steal too much thunder, but the region is predominant three quarters white wine, and like many regions, about uh, predominantly Riesling in terms of its number one grape variety. That accounts for about 27% of all plantings there. Um, but let's learn a little bit about um, Paul Anheuser from Paul Anheuser. And we're also going to pull our friend Derek Vinicom into the conversation, who's enjoying a nice long evening in Germany as well. It is about nine o'clock their time. So let's say hi to Paul. Hi, Paul. Uh, hi, Lean. Thanks for inviting us for this nice virtual tasting. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm so Thanks happy. for joining. No, let's, it's, uh, uh, let's get Derek in the conversation here. Of course. And uh, say hi yeah. to Derek. Hi, Derek. <laughs> Welcome hi, to yeah. tasting. It, it, it's the outdoor time of the year. So I'm sitting outside on the on a terrace and I'm already join, enjoying a nice glass of um, Nara wine. So I, I'm looking quite good at the moment. Yeah. Excellent. And you're Cheers. you're supporting our you're supporting Michigan, huh? You you got your Michigan Wolverine gear. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm Mich it's Michigan because I'm missing my Michigan friends, unfortunately. So uh, it's a Michigan evening today. Right on. Well, they they definitely. I haven't, I haven't put my tie on tonight for you guys. So. That's too formal. Too formal. Too formal. Man. Yeah, we're gonna have fun here today. So of course, yeah. yeah. Have fun. Paul, um, there's a lot of history. I mentioned 1627 as the founding yeah. of the winery. Yes. Um, you know, I don't want you to describe 350 years or so, <laughs> but uh, almost 400, right? Yeah, it's, it's you know, seven years more than we can discuss over 400 years. But um, in that time, it was the part that only the monarchs and the churches has the land. And... Uh, we get the city uh, people civil rights, and when it's the possibility to buy land for yourself, and since that we are in the agriculture business, and yeah, in the ninth generation, some of our families goes to US, and yes, that is one part of our history that we have the people with the beer and the wine, so we are full sortiment uh, alcoholic beverage drinking. Uh, family. So wine and beer and having fun with good stuff. So nine generations after Paul started the winery, you had a cousin or so that came yes. to the USA, went to St. Louis and created that little brewery we've heard of called uh, uh, Anheuser Busch. Yes. yes. Yeah. So this was 19, 1842. He's going to St. Louis 
leaving Germany and hopefully for the big business, the horizon country, America in that time. And he gets makes a good job. We are still in the business. And so both family parts are happy. Yeah, let's get back to let's get back to Germany and yes. and talk about your estate. I, I, you guys actually have um, how much how much acreage or how many hectares do you have under vine currently? Uh, currently, we are nearly on the hundred acres. So mainly in three villages in the Kreuznach village, we have about seventy six uh, acres. Mostly Riesling, the Pinot family, some uh, Scheurebe, Gewürztraminer, and uh, some smaller, unimportant for our estate. And then in the village Niederhausen, 100% Riesling, and in Schloss Böckelheim, Pinot Blanc and uh, Riesling. Well, that, that, uh, that actually pulls us directly into a little bit of the presentation. So let's, yeah. let's get the presentation up here so people can see where you are in Germany. First so, of all, you know, you're about almost all the regions are in the far south or south uh, west part of the country below uh, Frankfurt um, around where, where, where Derek, where are you in there? You're in the Rheinhessen now? Well, I'm in the Rheinhessen near Frankfurt. It's only 20 minutes to Frankfurt Airport that away over there. You can't hear any planes, unfortunately, because there are not many planes in the air at the moment. They're all parked on the runway. Uh, but usually you can see planes flying high above me at the moment yeah. but i'm only a stone's throw from from the nara over there that's about um 30 minutes away from 40 minutes away from here yeah but basically it's a beautiful, do beautiful well. area beautiful so, area not not just for wine it's also a great area the countryside also for mountain biking as well but it has a lot to offer from wine to food to countryside awesome so um, let's take a look on the map let's yeah bring bring uh, the little presentation into the uh, into view. And so here we got, uh, we kind of covered that nice little picture. It is green there, huh? Yes. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of green. So here we have uh, a map of, uh, you see the Mosul to the upper left, the Nahe in, the Naha in blue, and then the Rheinhessen where Derek is here in the, in the orange. But we're gonna focus on the tributary the Naha that runs into the Rhine River. Yes, yeah. And you can actually see Bad Kreuznach. It's in here. the state center. Not bad. And yes, then, that's good. And then we've got it's, a, it's not a bad place either, really. Well, it's Bad's a spa mean, place. Yes, Bad means spa, so a lot of these spa towns. <laughs> Nothing bad about it. <laughs> actually pretty awesome, I think. So here's uh, here's a, here's a view of the town and some of the vi single vineyard sites you were talking about. Um, so we mentioned Schloss Beckelheim down That's here. Okay. Whoops, sorry about that. And uh, we're going to taste wine from this vineyard site here, the Konigsfields. Yes, beautiful place, beautiful. Uh, it's volcano soil and more blue, dark stones, easy to crush after billions of years now. And I think some of the most dramatic, when I was visiting you, Paul, um, your, your mom and Derek took me, I think it was your mom and Derek took me over to the Niederhausen. And we yep. were looking at some of the steepest, craziest vineyards I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> the Felsensteier, yeah. The Felsensteier. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> you have to be a bit mad. <laughs> yeah, there were like rock outcroppings that you had to be a billy goat to try to go, uh, go work. <laughs> There's some similarities to the Mosul, but the, the Mosul is more open, the valley, and the upper part of the Nara region is very secluded, very hidden away. It's really beautiful, very rural and very, very, very hidden away from the rest of the world. Yeah, I think you even told me that there were certain regions or certain little vineyard portions that you actually had to take a boat in order to access? <laughs> yeah, former times, yes, but today <laughs> it's, we have a... We have a street again. Okay. <laughs> nope, no more horse and cart. <laughs> yes. Very good. So um, we focused down in here, and we're going to taste the Blanc de Noir, and I think we're getting pretty close to taste the Blanc de Noir. Yeah. Um, I think I, I was looking at some statistics, and about 7% of the region, the Naha, is, uh, is planted the Pinot Noir. Where are your Pinot Noir vineyards, and how much do you have? Uh, we have about now uh, five hectares uh, Pinot Noir, and that is close to the winery, just one 
kilometers away so that we have short distances where we have after picking the graves by hand so that we are not crushed the skins and so we have healthy grapes so we have a short distance to the winery so we have a quick way not far far driving distance so the the grapes could be cool in the winery and just crush the skin and we have a free run juice for the Pinot Noir Blanc. Yeah, that makes that makes total sense to protect the fruit that, and especially delicate fruit like Pinot Noir can be a very thin skinned uh, variety. Um, what's the idea do you make um, actually, so we make the Blanc de Noir which means white from red. So it's a white wine made from a red grape or dark grape. Um, what's do you make red Pinot Noir too? Yes, uh, the the, this, the the beginning of the Pinot Noir Blanc uh, was uh, 2002, where we have planted a new vineyard, and uh, we was thinking it was not good enough for our Pinot Noir red wine, so we are just making a joke, and it was about 500 liters. And our distributor from California was so interested in that product that the small spot market was opened for us. And that for us, a uh, great successful story together with you uh, starting in 2002. And now it is, we planted more Pinot Noir. So each time increasing it each year. And 2018 was the biggest amount of Pinot Noir Blanc we have made <laughs> and since we are reacting. Well, let everybody show off our bottles and let's them. <laughs> I've got a library sample of 2014. It's absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious now. Very mineral driven. Very mineral driven. So it's, it's a byproduct. That's about the nice about thing about it. It's, uh, it's only a byproduct, and it was otherwise it was just disappearing. And then Paul suddenly realized all the quality is quite good. And uh, as a byproduct, it's also nicely priced. And that's one of the key nice things about the Blanc de Noir. It's very inexpensive for what it is as a, an estate bottled wine. Very, yeah, we, very affordable, very affordable. We, yeah, we are focusing on the, we are harvesting not like a green harvest. So we are looking on physical, logical ripeness so mm. that the seeds are really healthy and the seeds are brownish so that we have the same stuff for the Pinot Noir and um, the Blanc de Noir. So the free run juice is just for the Pinot Noir Blanc. So we have nearly no color. And after fermentation, uh, the yeast took out the rest of the color. So we have a nearly white wine of the um, 2018. 2018 was a little bit more colored. So we have a really long growing period in 2018, early flowering and the hottest summer since we know about uh, the last decades. So we have a little bit more uh, colored intensity juice. So we are really only the first run we took. And then hopefully we have just a hint of a copper colored in the Pinot Noir Blanc. And I think it's a ideal partner for ripe uh, uh, dishes uh, we have very versatile uh, working with food together. Let's talk a little bit about um, let's talk a little bit about the flavor profile. First of all, for everybody out there that thinks um, that German wine has to be sweet, this is fermented to near near dryness, right? So we would say it's uh, nearly it's dry style. I would say, call it dry style. It's not off dryish. So it is uh, the balance of the acidity and sugar, residual sugar. It's mm. that is having the hints uh, that we get the flavor of red fruits like strawberries and um, oh, also from brass and yeah. of French and so and blueberries and uh, 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 Brombeere is, uh, I don't know exactly, Black 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 blackberry, Black blackberries, and so a hint of vanilla notes of a ripe uh, uh, and creamy notes of a ripe Pinot Noir. So we have a, by the body a real Pinot Noir. If you're tasting just the nose, uh, 
you get the flavor of a ripe Pinot Noir and then the lightiness of a white uh, wine. So this is, we would call the, in Germany a summer sipper and um, go uh, out of the, of the fridge and, and uh, take the bottle and drinking instead of one glass, two glasses because it's light, refreshing and really uh, delicious with light foods and you can drink two glasses or a bottle together and having still fun. So we're at about 12% alcohol, um, really probably maybe what, about six grams of residual sugar or so, would you say? No, it, 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 it's more, so it, it's a little bit more, but uh, the deeply minerality of this loam soil with gravels and it's not, and this uh, minerality and the acidity balance that nearly off dryish, it's, it's about 14 grams with little sugar, but it is, tasting drier than it is by See, I guess I guess less so right on target yeah. there yeah I mean it um, has a very it has a nice dry finish but it's not dry the the sweetness is hidden behind the acidity so it's very very versatile with with cuisine very versatile with any sort of food it has nice perfect, I think the the more than sweetness it enhances a little bit of the fruit but it also gives it gives it a lot of body there's a lot of body to this wine mm. yeah it gives it, it rounds it off nicely Excellent. yeah yeah, and yeah. The texture so, to the wine so this and, is and the, I think the acidity is not as high as a Riesling. So a lot of people say, oh, a Riesling, oh, it's too tart. Oh. Uh, and a Blanc de Noir, of course, um, that just rolls down your, your throat very beautifully. Yeah. Yeah, no, way know, of, no way of stopping it. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you have the, the second possibility to drink uh, some Blanc de Noirs. This is out of uh, France uh, with the sparkling. Uh, it's more expensive, and, but uh, the method is nearly the same. And we have a ripe Pinot Noir. So you, if a, uh, the woman wants to have a rosé and uh, the man wants to have a Pinot, a Pinot Gris or something, this wine is a possibility that everybody is happy because <laughs> the lady gets his rosé because we got Pinot Noir, Pinot Noir and he gets his white. So, you know, no discussion, having fun together. Good compromise. Yeah. Good compromise. Yeah, yeah. Well, every time we pour the wine in the U.S., the people say, oh, yes, please, because of the uh, price and the quality, and it's it's just, you just can't say no to it, really. Yeah, so in terms of price point, we're talking $14, $15 per yeah, pound. Yeah, yeah. This is for an estate bottled wine. I mean, this is marvelous. So. Yeah, we've got some friends joining us. Um, I think you guys are familiar with uh, our old buddy, Mr. Scott Keller. Yeah, yeah nice Scott. You, Scott. Yeah, I said hi to Chicago, yeah, yeah. So he's saying hi. Um, <laughs> I mentioned Charlie Master. He's uh, yeah, Charlie, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, we have a we have a wine cellars groupie, Lucy Herrera, that works for our wholesaler <laughs> in Austin. Uh, she is another wine professional. So she's she thinks that uh, she thinks the wine sounds delicious. Maybe we'll get some uh, we'll get some in her uh, wine bag to take out someday. Yeah. Okay. And of course, uh, in a restaurants, when 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 restaurants are open, this is a great glass pour as well. Yeah, really versatile. And and we have, um, you know, most places have uh, almost everywhere has pa at least patios open. So, yeah. you know, you, yeah. you mentioned porch pounder. I'll call it a patio porch, pounder. Yeah, yeah, patio pounder, porch pounder. That's, uh, that's a marvelous way of putting it. Yeah. All right, let's and go it back. Doesn't hurt, your po doesn't hurt your wallet either or your credit card. <laughs> Correct. But, <laughs> um, let's take a look at some of these uh, with a great... <laughs> Lucy says she's getting a bottle as soon as possible. So she <laughs> Okay, I, I'm on it. I, I'm working on it. Yeah. And if, hey, Lucy, if you need the sample bill back, put it on the wine cellar's budget, all right? So yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a look at some of, this, uh, some of this other cool stuff. We have really nice um, images that you guys put together for us here. Um, it's a family affair. We mentioned that you were 14th yep. generation. There's 15, 15th lovely, generation yeah. in here and 13th generation in there. Yeah, yeah lovely mom. kids. Yeah. Still on working. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So uh, tell us a little bit about the family and how the so, dynamic works and who does what. Um, mom is still uh, for the finances, uh, making the, uh, the books and looking after all books because um, – Rudolf is working more in the vineyards and uh, in the cellar, and I working mostly in the harvest uh, in the cellar, where he's outside in the vineyards to control each uh, single vineyard. 
when I'm making the starting point from the pressing and uh, cleaning of the juice. And mostly I'm on the wines selling and uh, business trips and uh, working together with Derek and other some distributors in all over the world. And also now after Corona and every affair is done, I go in a vineyard because we are the seasons workers are and all the employees are happy if the CEOs working together and then it's making more fun. Yeah, Anthony. as you see, it's, it's a it's a family business. It's just the family working. It's absolutely yes. marvelous. Yeah, and my question Lovely kids. is, Lovely how, kids. Does the, how does the fifteenth generation feel about um, working in the winery, and what what how do they feel about uh, so, the business? Yeah, that is the thing. Uh, we the, the youngest are ten, so we are interested in, but. Uh, we are not pushing them. We, if we have fall in love, we, they come. As the kids of my brother, we are working. Um, if we are here and we have fun and joining us, but uh, we are not pushing them because uh, if you are pushing somebody in that, it has to come by themselves. Uh, my brother was saying at the school, he was 14 years old, he is saying, I want to go in the wine business. And then he t said, I do it by myself. And I was going after finishing high school, going to a university, doing first something different. And then he said, oh, brother, could you come back? Hmm. It's too much work. It's, it is changing 20 years ago. Yeah. And um, so I said, give me a second. Yeah. The decision was made because I want to go inside, but I don't want to make him trouble if I want to make a and since that relationship with my brother is uh, working really well and uh, we have some more changes, little getting a little bit smaller. The winery was bigger with my father and we thinking sometimes less quantity is better for us. It is uh, focusing on the quality and see every vineyard by yourself and not to have too many em employees and you're just sitting in the office and uh, organizing. And, and we are, I think, now on the size for us that making fun and uh, free families can live and also all our employees have not the trouble to have only pressure by producing and selling. It's more now on the fun time. Yeah, but fun I must say, but I must say, Dorothea, it's amazing at her age. We won't we won't say how old she is, but at okay. her age, the amount of power that she still brings is absolutely amazing. She's just you full know, of energy. It's you know, it's uh, it must, it's it the level of uh, uh, of the your CEO um, or. You know, Yale and she are on the same age. You know, that's a power age. <laughs> yeah. Intense people. And by the way, your mom is one of the most lovely people I've met yeah. in or out of the wine industry. So please be sure to give her my regards. Yeah, uh, she will perhaps, uh, after this, uh, our tasting, I will join her and we drink in a glass of wine to finishing the day. Yeah, we are lucky. We are lucky because Dorothea doesn't like having her picture taken. But I've also taken quite a few nice pictures of Dorothea, and this one you see here is a nice one of her. But she doesn't like having her picture taken. But we, the picture of the family all together, and this one as well. It's, it's some nice pictures of her. She, she's yeah. absolutely. Lovely. She's lovely. Ladies, ladies has your interest, and that's okay. Oh, now something very special. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is. Um, if you know, if Derek is coming. He wants to have the black sausage and uh, Fleischwurst, you know? Mm, my favorite sausage. <laughs> so my local butcher, he's just two, two minutes from my estate. Um, he got a special announcement each time. If I know Derek is coming, I ordered that four weeks ago, before, that it is natural dried black sausage. So I can tell that this is a Derek slide he put in here for. <laughs> yes, of course. You it's know. a reminder. Who, I said, who needs a Michelin star restaurant? All you need is an outdoor setting in the vineyards, nice bottles of wine, some sausage from the local butcher, some fresh bread from the local baker, 
and sit out and enjoy it. This is better than any Michelin star restaurant. And a lot more affordable. <laughs> it, it, it's had nothing to do with affordable. Both is nice to have, yeah? But yeah. Um, joining food with friends, it's on this level more easy and having fun together with friends, easy. Just go to the butcher, put it on the plate, put some mm -hmm. wines on the table and enjoy the evening. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too much planning that. to go to a nice restaurant. I love, love nice restaurants like Lee. We did some years ago on the Mexican restaurant with the hot food. After a long uh, tasting with Heritage, you invited us to a spicy Mexican restaurant. Yeah, this was well, a lovely night. You Germans have a weird level of spice um, uh, ability. So your yeah. tolerance is very low. We take well, you know, but I was not swelling like our friend Volker. <laughs> yeah, but you see, this is this is why it's so easy, even with restaurants being closed, and we're all getting a bit sick and tired of the, the whole virus problem. But since middle of March, it has been it is possible to have to still have a nice life. Just get an authentic, authentic food and authentic wines at home, uh, and that is possible to enjoy life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, we're, we're just going to go all down the drain. <laughs> well, it is definitely uplifting. Food and beverage have uh, buoyed my spirits for sure. Yeah. Not just uh, yeah. not just now, but uh, throughout my entire life. So, um, yeah, yeah. But especially this since since middle of March, this has been very important to enjoy authentic wine and authentic food uh, authentic with a few people. Yeah, yeah. it's very all important. Right. Very Let's, important. Uh, we mentioned the, the town of yeah. uh, Bad Kreuznach, and it's a spa town, which means that you guys have, what, some natural uh, natural wells and, and yeah. waters? And there's a special area, one of the, this is called Salinental, and um, there is, uh, we have salt water, and this is over, um, going over wood parts so it is the feeling of the sea time if you like on the coast yeah. you get fresh salt water it's cooling down our uh, city so it is the greatest um gradierwerke that is called um, for the salt water making so we make salt in the old times and this is the greatest area in Germany we have in our small well, town. Salt, salt was as expensive as gold back in those days, but uh, we haven't got a seaside here. So, um, and at the seaside, you have this beautiful air, which is good for your lungs. Um, but at Bad Kreuznach, when you uh, we walk through there or we bike through there, and we get this beautiful, like being at the seaside, this beautiful salty air coming towards you. It really does. It's good for your your lungs. It's very good indeed. Yeah, I miss. Uh, I miss uh, here in Chicago. I miss our coast. We have a we have a very yeah. large lake, but it's not salt. Yeah, but it's not salt. It's not salt. Yeah. Yeah. So. And this salt, salty air, at the seaside is it's it's uh, very good for your health. It's good for the soul too. Yeah, so. and, and of course, you, you, but you've got to have a glass of wine to go with it to to rinse sure. down the salty air. <laughs> so now perhaps uh, Lee is, wants to mm -hmm. go to down go to down to the cellar with the spider wall. Uh, ah. protecting our library cellar. I can do that. I yeah. Do yeah. That. Just don't let me have a corkscrew. Well, you know. <laughs> you know, the spider's protecting my library cellar. Well, yeah. we're actually going to, eventually we're going to open up a couple of library samples here. Yeah, I'm looking forward to yes. that. We're going to have our wish, but I think we want to talk a little bit more about um, Schloss Beckel. Of course. Of course. Sp uh, Schloss Beckelheim uh, is a really special area in our region where we have billions of years ago we have volcanoes like um, nearly the same soil type uh, like near to san francisco so some iron parts and copper so there was also a copper mine so the the soil is fast and cold uh, porphyry so fast cold volcano soil so we have different minerals to compare with the red sandstone from Rheinhessen Nierstein area or the, the limestone. So it is like, like a grapefruit. It is um, first a little bit bitter and have a long lasting aftertaste and a refreshing character. So, and these vineyards uh, are so 
it's like a cool climate desert in that region because we are protected from north from hills, from the Hunsrück, from the south from the Pfalzwald. And so we have normally west streams, so we get from west our rainfalls, so we get nearly no rain in that area. So, um, and there is a part of the Schloss Böckelheim area, one of the oldest nature park uh, areas in Germany because of special grasses and areas. So something, a special microclimate for our region. So, yeah, so deep, you're, deep you're vineyards. And of course, it's a higher altitude. It's, it's much higher altitude up at Schloss Böckelheim. So we do have, a, it is the natural cooler climate up there. And uh, I mean, 30 years ago, we had difficulties getting Riesling to ripen. Now it's no problem, but it's still much cooler down than in the Rhine Valley, much cooler up there. Yeah. We, we would call it Little Alaska. Little Alaska. <laughs> That's good. Little Alaska. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. That's good. <laughs> yeah, for our region, it's, it's called like Little Alaska. Ah, because... now we see the terroir. This is this so, very special terroir. Yeah, yeah. You have in the lava streams, you have different kinds of minerals. Sometimes mm. you have more sulfides or copper or mm. um, iron. Right, yeah. So, and so each. 50 meters or 20 meters, you have sometimes more dark bluish uh, lava streams and yellow uh, streams. It depends on the uh, temperature of the lava and how quick it's cold. So, mm. and these stones really took over the the, the sun hour, during sun hours, the, the warmness and uh, the rain is going down. So, um, the the roots has to go really deep to get in uh, hot summer days uh, on water. So it's more uh, concentrated wines than to compare to our Niederhausen area or Kreuznach area with different minerals. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense though. The, the, the volcanic, the dark volcanic material retains yeah, yeah. and it also is, it allows water to flow through because it's very porous. Yeah, yeah. So you have that that combination of uh, drainage as well as uh, heat retention. But it is it is a very very special minerality. It's quite different to the chalkiness of the the limestone or this. When we go across the Hunsrück to the Mosel with the slate, black and blue slate, that's very flinty. Uh, but this is and steely. But this minerality on the on the in Schloss Böckelheim, that's so very specific. Uh, it's easy to pick out if you have several. Bottles yeah. in front. Uh, it, it's for me. It's something so amazing how this this minerality differs from the other soils. Riesling really reflects this minerality, this terroir, so well. Yeah, and that's uh, something like uh, it's uh, it's like a uh, Caipirinha. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> on one side you have these. Uh, if we have here uh, with the Schloss Böckelheim, we have mostly a fruity style cabinet that is developed on the vintages between 35 grams residual sugar up to 47 grams residual sugar. It's depending on the vintage. Yeah, but they don't so, taste sweet. They don't taste sweet. No, it's so, just and nice, and nice they, it yeah. tastes like off dry yeah, yeah. It's the herbal mm. character by the minerals mm. of the... Yeah, it's, it's like these uh, splaying like a caipirinha. <laughs> Well, let's let's but, dive in and but, um, yeah, but, but don't drink too many caipirinhas. Two's enough. But with the with the Ries, with the uh, riesling, the Schlossberg, you can drink two more than two. <laughs> yeah, we're well, talking about a nine percent alcohol, give or take, on the cabinet with your thirty-five to forty-seven grams of RS and high acidity, six yeah, six to seven, six, seven. Grams per liter. And uh, this is the in two thousand eighteen. It's a little bit higher because of the long growing period, a little bit less uh, acidity. And I have also now the 2018 that is was a little bit bottled late in uh, 19. And uh, because I was thinking it's better to have them a little bit longer time on the, our tradition wooden barrels and to get a ripe, oh, ripe character. Such and a, this is the view area. from the top of the Königsfels mm. area. We have a little bit more on the west side here, but this is the nicest view up mm. down to the village of Oberhausen and Niederhausen with the uh, copper mine uh, area. So this is a distinctive uh, area for our small region. 
This is getting close to paradise, having a picnic here. We've done that before. That is getting close to, close to paradise. Yeah, you can see the river way down. Yeah, right it, down, right down, yeah. Yeah, so you only, can see well, It's only a very small river, very small, yeah. But it's so beautiful and very quiet. Ah, there's Paul. Well, this, is, this, this was early in uh, April, nearly April, beginning on the Winnie Tours tasting tour sometimes mm -hmm. 2012. Yep, holding his terroir, yeah. And now this is the uh, more the view from the Bad Sobernheim, the spa of Sobernheim up to Schloss Böckelheim area. So on the left-hand side on this picture, this is the Königsfels area we have. Yeah, the story of the Königsfels, of course, not quite, not very nice. It's about a king who got imprisoned and died of star. He was he was put in prison till he died. I mean, it wasn't. Yeah, that it was, very was uh, the, it wasn't very pleasant in those days. The emperor, the Henry the Twelfth, uh, prisoned his father Henry the <laughs> Eleventh. He was he stayed in prison till he died. <laughs> of you know, star. this is history. You know, sometimes it's not changing. Also today, some people goes to prison. They didn't know why. <laughs> Uh -huh. Well, we won't get into those more details. No, no this is, uh, so, you know, but this is history. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's go back to the Konigsfels. Mm. 2018. 2018, the name itself mm. means King's Fields, so the yeah. wine better be good. Yeah, because uh, this is, um, we have the oldest part is planted uh, in the 70s, and the youngest part we have um, re- uh, planting time in the beginning of the 90s. So uh, in the in the 80s, we have about a thousand parcels uh, of small vineyards in Schloss Böckelheim. So each sometimes the smallest was just two square meters. <laughs> so in that it was impossible to react in in newer times for. Uh, making wines. So there was a re replanting time in the 90s. So since that, we have only seven vineyards anymore, but it's nearly the same size. So, and that is making for us the working easier. And it is a south facing steep vineyard. It's my body workout each time in the summer. <laughs> You'd, I don't know, go to a fitness studio, I go to a body workout in the vineyards. Yeah, Paul always looks very healthy. <laughs> it's hard work, and especially when you got vineyards that, that have that kind of grade and locations, and and it's yeah. hard work anyway. I you know I admire anybody who tends, tends to the vine because it's a lot of not only dedication, but it's physical manual labor. People think it have this romantic vision of what well, it is for, to make yeah, wine. And yeah, it, but, but, but you, Paul, if, if you are in the field... Show us his knee. He broke his knee a, a week ago. He just he told me about it the day before yesterday. So he's got a broken bone. No, you know, but uh, the thing is, the last two weeks is what, two weeks ago, I walk without any knowledge of that. Two weeks working with that, and that is quite, quite okay. But after doing this job, in the vineyards, you're going at home and you're feeling good because <laughs> it's like uh, we would say, it's like uh, Hawaii uh, triathlon, and um, it's I think you did it, and you yeah. get successful at home, and when you drink wine, and when you re re you know, it's done for that day. You it's, have not to think yeah. about. It's the same with all winemakers. They, you, when you've worked in the vineyards the whole day, you can see your success, what you have done and achieved. Yep. I can work the whole day in the office and I can't see any progress at all. <laughs> well, you're not very productive in the office, Derek. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> he doubt, you know, did our paperwork. Without him, yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't I just, sell any bottle to you. Still, yes. There's still masses of paperwork. But I, I've done this in the vineyards working. It's, it's so pleasing because you can see what you've done. Yeah. There's and a it's amazing, and it's amazing working with Mother Nature. I mean, it's not just in Germany; it's worldwide. Working with Mother Nature is is something very, very special. It's not an industrial product; it is something very special. Wine, very special indeed. Yeah, we've talked a lot of Derek. You've even been on the on the on a couple of virtual tastings where we talk about a lot of these these concepts, which is natural products and then yeah. family, yeah. a lot of family ownership because 
what we're doing today. We can see we can see reward of what we've done today, but it really pays off in the next generation or the generation after that. So yeah. we see a natural product that that hopefully and a lot of families involved. And in, yeah. we've, we've got 14 generations with us here today. Um, going to tell us a little bit more about the Schloss Beckelheim Koenig fills and, and what you're yeah. looking for in terms of flavor profile and what you pair it with. with yeah, food. I would, I would go say um, with the flavor profile, you get some peaches yeah. near so, goals to grapefruit and sometimes so a little bit like lemongrass or so mm -hmm. spiciness. Yeah, yeah. And so that is a refreshing character. I would go after a long working day, it's hot outside, like summer, like yesterday, and sitting on the patio and taking like a refresher. You're feeling like, well, it's making your palate again refreshing, or you take uh, some oysters or seafood mm -hmm. or, or Asian cuisine. So it's also quite versatile, also with the riper vintage. Uh, the premier aromas going a bit behind and they get drier, they get not sweet, they get drier and more to the off dry style. Obviously, it is a fruity style of wine. Yeah, we'll get to some of the, we'll get to what it turns into with some bottle age, but we have, I think Derek, we were just talking about how this is a natural product. And this 2018 to me reflects that vintage, very, very warm vintage. Yeah, yeah. And it's very, but, for me, it's broad on the palate. It doesn't have that kind of like linearity of, of acidity um, that I typically, or as much, linearity of, of the acidity that I'm used to from the wine. Yeah, 2018, the <laughs> harvesting was a little bit later because um, we have a little bit more plenty wines in that because we have healthy grapes and uh, uh, we have a little bit frost diseases in Schloss Böckelheim. So we have the latest picking was on the 10th of November. So this was a really late picking for that, also for our winery. But uh, with the steep vineyards, we have about 10 hectares at that time, uh, just steep vineyards for only picking by hand. And then we have some others like the Gewürztraminer, the Pinot Noir. So it's, it's about 15 hectares just only picking by hands. And it's a small group and not any more 100 seasons workers as, as I was a child with eight years in the vineyards. We will have mostly 100 people. But that time is gone. Yeah. Um, you take a look at the analytics on here. Derek sent me analytics from yep. 95, 2002, 2017, and 2018. And the sugars are around the same, plus or minus 39 by a couple of grams. So the sugars yeah. are around the same. But the alcohol here, you're at 10.6, whereas you're probably closer to nine or maybe even below nine in other vintages. So a yeah. degree and a half of alcohol is probably 25 extra grams of sugar per liter. A lot of it's a lot of different in terms of ripeness. Yes, if you are, we are thinking uh, 2001, uh, we have a, a blood leaf break that was nearly a month later than today. So, yeah. and we are speaking uh, 2018 and all, uh, something near to March, the blood leaf break and beginning of uh, April. Uh, the vegetation was quite more longer and uh, the summer was the hottest summer we have. So we wants not to make, we could harvest that wine in, in September, but then the physiological ripeness wouldn't be there. And then perhaps the ripening on the bottle would be different. So we have to balance by us and it's more tasting some beers uh, during harvest and looking after them and then we hoping that our tasting in that day is the right decision and we have to stand for that and that we've done yet now for 17 years we are in charge my brother and myself now 17 years and perhaps we did not each time the best decision but human beings yeah it's yeah, the decision but, uh, of that day you have made I mean, and we are proud of that yeah, in 2003, we had our first very, very hot year. We hadn't experienced anything like that before. I mean, we have this thing called global warming. Some people haven't heard about it yet, but it's hit Germany really in 2003. And that was the hottest we'd ever seen where people died of the heat wave. But the oaks of the bricks went up too high. So the 2003, some of them are too fat. 
the wines. They were just too too big. But since then, we've learned how to deal with this problem. So a lot more foliage management is now taking place. Um, less leaves, plucking, leaf plucking, less leaves, less foliage to keep the Erxler, the bricks down as far as possible. Keep the uh, and so you see that we see that 18 was just as hot as 2003, but we've learned a tremendous amount. Everybody's learned a tremendous amount since 2003. So um, even though we've had 2018, 2019, very hot years, we can still manage now with foliage management and picking at the right time, not too late and not too early with, as Paul said, with physiological ripeness, but not waiting too long. So we're keeping the bricks within a certain level now. So we've learned over the years, but it's it's uh, in the old days we had we had a problem to get the bricks up high enough to get Riesling to ripen. That was our problem. Now we now it's the problem to keep the bricks down. <laughs> yeah, uh, too much ripeness rather than not struggling for ripeness. Yeah, yeah. Now you're worried about. It's so it's it's also we are a not worried, but um, we so, are learning about them yeah. uh, in the vineyard management uh, yeah. to cut some roots later so that we are starting with the flowering period later so mm -hmm. that yeah. we have the same that we not in the hurry to pick up the grapes or pick the grapes in hot september days or mm -hmm. beginning of and august of some wines so we are doing some vineyard management to put them back and hopefully make the right decision that we have not rainfalls in that times so. yeah. And I must say, it's much more work in the vineyards than it used to be 20, 30 years ago. Much more work. So, But you have to invest this time in the vineyards. Otherwise, you have no chance nowadays with this global warming. But uh, we've seen it, if people do this work, um, it can be successful. That we, uh, we get decent grapes coming into the, into the, into the pressing house with not too high bricks. Well, and not sunburn. Sunburn. Sunburn is also a problem, yeah. Let's take a let's take a flat. This is going to be the highlight for me. Um, oh, yeah. We're going to go back in time, and uh, we're going to get in our time capsule and our time machine and go back. Um, we have because uh, because of that beautiful deep dark cellar that I'm guarding for you. There are treasures down there, and occasionally you'll uh, push back some cobwebs and you'll discover <laughs> a pallet of a 1995 Schlossberg Bills cabinet. Yes. That was fun. Oh, God. We're actually uh, selling a little bit of that. We sold a bunch of it um, through the Mid-Atlantic here in Illinois. And also, we're still selling it. If you, I think you can still find it in the retail in Florida. So um, if you're in Orlando, you can find it at Tim's. Um, we'll give a shout out to him. He's a great supporter of ours. So, um, But you can find it in other places in Florida. Um, and then I was able to go into the wine cellars. Um, <laughs> And I found a 2002. 2002. Oh, I have the 1995 for you. So if you want to uh, speak, uh, we, we have both here. I can I have, have the 95 here. Get, pour me a glass, Paul. Pour me a glass. Pour me a glass. <laughs> Cheers. Right. And of course, this, this was recorked. So yes. um, that was also very important. So Paul went all to this trouble of recorking every single bottle. An enormous task he went to do this. So a financial disaster, really. The no, it's the not. A, it's a disaster. I would think <laughs> it's um, if we are working now forty years together with wine sellers, and and this decision we selling this wine first time in US the nineteen ninety five was uh, to have a, a special agreement with Adam and Jordan uh, to do something for the restaurants to show that the German Riesling. Uh, it's not old if it's the, the last vintage, uh, just 2017 or something. Mm. So, so uh, sometimes you you get the interest by people, uh, give me the used vintage, please. Just the used vintage is interesting. And our wine making is like, uh, not like um, a sprint, like using bold, the 100 meters. We are thinking of uh, the development of our wines are made like a marathon. Mm -hmm. We are starting slow and getting mm -hmm. more interesting in each year because the time from here, from bottling to the tasting with the professionals like Derek and all sommeliers, perhaps is one year. And then the consumption in the restaurant or 
private home. It's one sometimes two or three years. So our wines, the balance between sugar, acidity, and body by minerals and not only alcohol, um, we're looking for, if it is dry style, fruity style, or off dry, we are looking on a balance that it's making fun starting here and ending here sometimes a little bit higher. So it's increasing the development, the, the complexity after mm. several years with the Schloss Böckelheim mm. area, the 2002 or the 95, the complexity, it's different. The premier aromas, the light freshness, it's gone. Then the minerals come up more in the front and they get more interesting uh, with a dry finish that by the aging, now the 1995 that I have here in the class, it is it by the alcohol content and that time by eight gram, uh, eight per percent alcohol and just 35 gram residual sugar. So it is like a off dry, uh, now a dry style after 35, uh, 25 years on aging now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you taste sweet wines as they age, they tend to dry out and the sugar doesn't go away, but it just seems perceivably drier on it the palate. into the background. Yeah. yeah. And, and you also get the primary stuff, all that all that really bright, gone, sharp gone. Fruity is relaxed. And all that primary fruit that is like this relaxes and you get this tertiary development, stuff that happens in the bottle. Or maybe it's stuff that was there, but we couldn't taste because the other stuff was so loud. This has come out of the terroir, out yeah. of the millions of years of old age. And, this is coming out. And <laughs> for 25 years aging now on the bottle and just recorking in, in, in 2018. And um, this is, was a still mm, fresh beautiful. light cabinet. And mm. here, just a little this cabinet. was, yes, and we have uh, just have good conditions in our cellar. It's still eight degrees Celsius. And uh, with the open bottom, it's no, it's just a, a stamped uh, bottom. So it's my air conditioned. I need no air condition in my cellar. It's still eight degrees Celsius, high humidity. So the natural cork, it's not getting bad. Yeah, I remember oh. that was in May last year. Your mother, your mum, poured the wine at the Ritz Carlton trade show of Heritage, and it was a Everybody in the whole room started talking about it. Everybody said, we've got to taste this 95. It is so spectacular, just a little cabinet, but it was so complex and such a wonderful wine. Well, let's so talk about were, what we get. People, people were queuing up. If Scott Cohen is still watching, he should whisper in Rob Holtman's ear that there's oh. another palette available of it, all right? Yeah, so. yeah. I, I'm, I'm waiting for something. Um, oh, I will send her greetings to uh, Dorothy Scott. And um, we have sometimes really small quantities, special offers and, and for the restaurants, because also in Germany, we are partner of the restaurant business. And that's really easy to have uh, to get these playing old vintage, young vintage, these mm. playing we have in successful done and that is keeping the people in mind. And so it's more easy to react again on the force in the market because in the shelf, sometimes we are lost. We are not in the market as big that we could be each shelf. So it's more a unique item that has to be um, introduced for people. They are open-minded. I must say something, of course, um, these wines, these older vintage wines, uh, wouldn't be available today if there was such interest in the German domestic market. But unfortunately, the, most of the Germans are a bit stupid. I know it from my friends, they, my friends here in Germany, they wouldn't drink these older wines. They just don't realize the quality. But, but our American friends, they are onto it. And they are lapping yeah. up this older stuff. The wine's incredible. This is, yeah. this is what I love about aged German Riesling is you, it's not only is it delicious, but it's something that cannot be made anywhere else and is so unique and so complex and yeah, just, yeah. 
it's kind of like what I got in the wine industry, not knowing that this is what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's it's such an experience to open an older bottle of Riesling. I mean, okay, nowadays um, we have the problems with the corks. Yes, the only problem is not the wine; it's the damn cork. Uh, so, as as, as I said, uh, Paul had recorked it, um, and that that is the only problem. Like, these wines would would last much longer if they didn't if they didn't have corks and uh, the newer vintages now with the Stelvin seal they are going to be absolutely immortal they'll outlive my great-grandchildren probably yeah but, but it's, it's, it depends on the different vineyards we have so, the Gewürztraminer especially we still have uh, with the natural cork because our main market is France and uh, traditional Europe and the development is different. And um, I, would say, I wouldn't do uh, a Trockenbeeren Auslese in a Magnum bottle with screw cap. This is uh, something I didn't do, but we did uh, in 2003, the two, uh, Magnum bottle with Trockenbeeren Auslese. It was just fun and the development is great. Yeah, but we're, we're talking about wines we can afford to drink myself. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I can't well, drink a truck and be an laser very often. <laughs> so the current vintage on the, the Koningsville is about 16 maybe $17. Um, yeah. And the older vintage is you're, you're, you're releasing them. We're selling them for almost the same price, certainly under $20. Yeah. So so this was a special agreement. <laughs> no, it was uh, just special a agreement. special agreement between... The two CEOs. Um, let's talk about what we get out of this older wine and what, what mm -hmm. I mean, we talked about what we weren't getting out of it and and a little bit about the complexity. Let's talk about the complexities. Uh, Paul, what are, you, what are you tasting in the 95 there? Uh, so this is more now a hints of portritis, uh, hints of um, uh, petrol note. It's just beginning. And uh, the color, it's, it's a, a, a nice, refreshing acidity. And the minerality of the sulfides and copper parts of the minerals making me, in the back throat, a long-lasting aftertaste. I have a sip done two, three minutes ago. And it's still in the back throat. It's still there. I don't need any uh, re-drinking. It's still there. It's mm -hmm. making my food happy and uh, it's still mouth watering my mouth. And so yep. it's a long lasting aftertaste. And the main thing of the wine is still, I mean, older wines you can get, it's either dead or alive. And this, especially this 95, it's still alive. I mean, that's the first aspect about an older wine. Sometimes you'd be like, socks that have gone to sleep. Um, it's too old and over the hill. But a Riesling, especially a Riesling like this 95 and other wines from, from the Paul Arnoise estate, the older wines, they just don't die. They just keep on going on and on and on. And that's this 95, as I said, as we show, people are so amazed about the freshness. I mean, it's, it's not a youngster anymore. It's, it's an old guy, but it's still life in it. It's no, still I wouldn't for, say it's, it's an old guy. Party. I would say um, the 2018 is a baby. Yeah. And uh, this, uh, we would say, for ladies, uh, and the 1995 is pretty woman now. Oh, <laughs> nice, beautiful young lady. Yeah, pretty woman. Yes. Like your mother, like your mother. Yeah, you know, may get more intense of, uh, knowledge more about life. Much yeah, more interesting. You know, sometimes kids are rough and rude. And so you this is something. develop more polish and more depth. Yeah. And more intellect. Yeah. Here, yeah. uh, my O2 is still very alive too. Yeah. Um, I don't get any of the petrol notes. I do get some minerality in here, but the fruit has definitely changed. Instead of like that peachy notes, I get more like dried apricot. Um, okay. The dried fruit, and I get a lot of tangerine kind of notes and maybe some ginger on the finish. Yeah. Um, and, and, and along with that minerality that we've been talking about, mm. but still very vibrant and the finish does keep going. Yeah. Very alive, yeah. As I said, and of course, the 95 is also dry tasting now. There's no there's no sweetness on the palate anymore. But it's no. just hidden there. It's hidden. It's, it just lost its sweet flavor. The sweetness is gone. But it's still so so alive, that 95. And this is making fun. If you're going in the library cellar and making these tasting together with Derek, if we are doing some special announcements for the US market, 
but we are sometimes don't look after 10 years after some wines and when there come a special interest we are looking on good vintages what we are thinking for us is a good vintage we make about 100 cases each time for the library and that's um, a philosophy for us to be a partner in the restaurant business well uh we lost derek again he's got spotty internet connection you know this is uh, you know it's ryan hessen <laughs> he, he's near to uh, to near to the river Rhine. Uh, perhaps he is floating. Perhaps uh, I don't know. But he's here it's persistent. more local. He's persistent. He comes back in here. Oh, yeah, I, I come I, back. Yeah, but I get too excited thinking about this '95, and I press the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> no, as I said, I, I can get very excited about these older wines because it's it's such a, a marvelous experience. Doesn't have to be a German wine. I can try. I can try any older wines, but uh, even some of the top Bordeaux from the eighties, the eighty-two or eighty-three vintage. There, some of them are getting a bit tired. Some of these expensive top Bordeaux, they're getting tired. But an older, an older German wine that can be so exciting. Yeah, I've definitely had my fair share of wines that were meant to age but were over the hill. This is not over the hill. I would call no, it. No, 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 no. no. Well, this we is would a, say this is plenty of life left in it. Yeah. And of course, with the new cork like now, uh, it has still has tremendous amount of life in front of it. I well, would say great. this is something, uh, if you like this little bit changing from the premier aromes and a little bit ripeness, deepness, and then this wine is a lovely mm. partner for dishes. It could be salmon or grilled, easy, just a steak and a little bit potato and do nothing. Uh, well, yeah, I, I, enjoy it. Anything, anything smoked would be very nice. Any uh, smoked salmon or anything smoked or sm anything smoked, a smoked yeah. dish would be very nice. Well, that's or a light, a light pate. Light pate. Um, plenty, plenty of ideas to go with it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe even like a smoked duck breast. How about that? Yeah, one? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And of hungry. course, the main thing is it would have to be a nice, delicate food because the wine is fairly delicate. So yeah, it's, it's less alcohol. Wine, so very, very delicate, body. fine food would go with it very nicely. Yeah. So we've hit uh, quite a bit of information. We've we've gotten from 1627 up to uh, present day, mm -hmm. and we've talked about generations from one to nine to thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Um, Paul, did we miss anything that we should uh, be talking about or anything you want to uh, talk about before we uh, say goodbye to folks and let them get on with our Saturday? Uh, mm -hmm. I would say thanks, Lee, for all your support today and uh, all you, you've done in the last weeks for us uh, to get our German part of the portfolio in your country well-educated and uh, hopefully see you soon. Hopefully, I don't know if we get seeing you in September. And no chance. Looking forward. Looking um, forward. Be a positive. You know, it's development. Um, so some data come out today, and uh, unfortunately, Americans aren't even allowed into Europe anymore. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see how that is. We're having. We're obviously having some uh, difficulties getting our act together, but uh, we'll be optimistic. Exactly. Meantime, That's we are optimistic because we got something decent to eat and something to drink, so we're staying optimistic. Oh, look at that, ninety-five. Um, I love two thousand two. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. gentlemen, I want to thank you for your time today. Um, no, thank you. It's been fun again. I always I enjoy thank it. Eric for joining us and all the hard. No, work it's it's uh, these virtual tastings are very enjoyable, and I can always learn something new. That's the point of always. doing. Oh yeah. And Paul, yes. please say hi to your brother and your mother and um, keep up the good work out there and I hope the knee feels better. Yeah, you know, yeah, good wine medicine, and relaxing medicine, medicine. After, the, after working session and enjoy the weekend and then it's okay. Thanks. All right, yeah. Everybody stay safe out there and learn how to stay Lee. safe. Nice to see you, Paul. Cheers. Great to be with you guys. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>